Hello beautiful people, it's the girl Jeanne and it's Jeanne Signature. So today I'll be making this beautiful gown with a ruched sleeve and a ruched side. There's ruch on the sides as well. It's very beautiful and I made use, and I made use of a Kampala fabric. I made use of five yards of fabric for this because I made it with a trouser. So if this is what you're interested in, please kind of watch till the end. And as you're watching, please don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to like and don't forget to share. Yeah, this came out very beautiful and it's quite beginner friendly. So like I said, if you're interested, please kind of watch till the end. Thank you all and God bless you. So without wasting further time, I'll be switching over to my cotton table right about now. Thank you all. Thank you and thank you. So for the trouser part, this will be in a forward mode because I already have enough tutorials on my channel showing you how to cut a trouser. So if you feel you don't know how to cut a trouser very well, just go ahead and check out my tutorials and then you get to see it. So I didn't want this tutorial to be too lengthy. I just decided to show it like this in a fast forward mode so that you would know that I cut a trouser with it. So very shortly, I'll be heading over to cutting up the top because that's where our major focus is going to be for today's tutorial. So if you have any questions, please kind of leave it in the comment section. I'll be right there to give you answers. So this is cutting up the back just lift it by two inches and then i'm adding my sewing allowances because i didn't add the sewing allowance to the front piece and so i'm extending the crotch for the back as you can see and then i'm going to be drawing that like so and then for the side i'll just uh, slant it in words like so and then i'm cutting this out so we're basically through with the trouser part so i'm just trying to cut it out And so we're through. We have a front and then we have a back basis. So I just want to slant the waist area so that it will sit perfectly well. So and this is what we have. So to this trouser, I'll just be adding a, an elastic to that on the waist area. That's why I made the use of my hip measurement as well. So now I'm coming over to cutting off the upper part, which is our AOC. So for this upper part, I've folded my fabric into four. Like I always say, please always check the patterns on your fabric before cutting. Because the patterns on the fabric always brings out the natural beauty of a particular style. That is some styles that you don't really need to stress yourself uh, decorating and all. Once you um, get the pattern correctly and rightly, you'll see that the design is going to be coming out very beautiful. So I folded my fabric into four. And for the neckline, I'm going to be making use of 3.5 inches. And then I'll be cutting both the front and the back simultaneously. So for the back, I'll be coming down by one inch for the neck depth. So I'll be using my hand to rule that out, as you can see. So this is for the back neckline. Later, I'll be separating that to uh, differentiate between the front neckline. So for my shoulder slope, I'll be making use of 1.5 inches. And then from there, I'll be connecting it to meet my neckline like so just slant it like so and then for my round sleeve that is the arm opening i'll be making use of um i made use of uh, 10 inches yeah either 10 or 12 inches i can't really remember but anything you want to make use of please kindly make use of that and then from there i'll be coming in by three inches or four inches yeah so depending on how big you want your own to be if you want it very bogus you can just use two inches but my client had already told me that she doesn't want it to be too uh wide at the side so that is why i'm coming in by four inches so i'm going to be taking the whole length like so carve it out and then take it all the way down Just have it like so and then cut it out so I'm basically going to be cutting this out before adjusting the neckline for the front and 
and then I'll come over to the neckline let me just cut this for the back and then cut the shoulder slopes and this is what we have so I'll be separating the front from the back so that I would adjust the neckline for the back for the front I beg your pardon so I'll be removing that one and then leaving the other one for the front so let me fold it back just to make sure that the neckline is properly aligned and the sides as well And so for the neck depth for the front, I'll be making use of 7 inches. I came down, just put into consideration that you already have 1 inch removed from the back and then place it like so. And then mark the depth for the neckline for the front. And so this is going to be a V neckline. And so I'll be slanting that like so. So you just cut it out. So we have this so now i'm going to be cutting out because i'll be making use of a facing for both the front and the back neck lines i'm not going to be making use of a lining or bias i believe is either you use a facing or a lining that is what makes the work neater if you make use of a bias there's no love lost but in order for you to get that finishing that looks neat and clean i would advise you use a facing so I'm just going to be cutting out the facing so you can see the design that we have in the front. Do you see that it looks like a V? So that is what I was trying to talk about. So let me just fold this back and then get a, a piece of uh, fabric. That is what I have on fold. And then I'll be cutting out the facing. Hope you know all, all not to cut out the facing. It's very easy. So just place your fabric on fold and then you cut like so. Just make sure you cut out exactly what you have on the neckline. And then for the front, you just extend it by 4 or 5 inches. So that by the time you finish doing everything, by the time you use your emming gum to glue it down on the reverse side, it will not be flipping out of the neckline. So I just came down by 4 inches and then I'm indicating the that on the facing. And then I'll lift this off and then cut that out. So I'll be trimming off the edges. Yes. And so we're basically through with the facing for the front, as you can see. So let me just place it on it so that you would see how it's going to be looking. So this is what we have. It's as easy as A and B and C. So this is what we have. We have our facing ready. So I'll be setting this aside and then I'll cut the facing for the back as well. So the same thing I did for the front is what I'll be repeating for the back. But I'm going to be showing you. So I already have a piece of my fabric as well folded into two as you can see. And then I'll be placing the neckline of the back on it like so. Make sure the folded sides are facing or aligned to each other and then you cut out the neckline exactly what you have on the fabric and then you cut out the shoulder like so too and so this is what we have so just try to trim out the excess so if you want to make a facing like this, just make sure that the length of the facing is a little bit deep. You don't want it too short because it will be difficult for you to attach your aiming gum and all. Or even if you don't want to attach your aiming gum, it will sit in place. But if it's too short, you won't be able to do that. 
so now you can see this is for the back so i'll just go ahead and do all this and then i'll be right back let me turn it all the way around and then i'll be right back so i'm so sorry my um i didn't know my camera was not recording as at the time i was doing this shoulder part so if you want me to make a tutorial on how i achieved this um ruched sleeves on the sleeve on the shoulder part please kindly leave it in the comment section and i will do that i don't know that i didn't know my camera was not recording and i, I was so angry but please if you want me to make a tutorial now i achieved that i would gladly do that it's very easy yeah so i've already done that so i don't know how to explain it that you would understand except you saw how i did it but i made out a band i cut out a band of 1.5 inches and then i placed it on the shoulder line and then run a stitch the way i will be doing my side rush i'm going to be showing you that one because i made sure that i recorded that very well so let me quickly run my side seams by one inch respectively on both sides and then fold the hem of the gown and then i'll be right back to show you how i did the ruched effect on the sides and these are the ropes that i'll be making use for the ruched sides so yes so for the side ruching i've already gone ahead to do one side off camera as you can see so i'll just be explaining to you how i did it on the other side of the gown so this fabric is very strong it's a very strong fabric so you can see the way i was pulling it it was not going freely so it's a very thick fabric this is like the original uh, kampala that they sell very strong yeah and so on this side now you know i ran my side seams by one inch so i ended up let me just open it up so that you would see before I go on. So I ended up folding my uh, allowance inwards, like using it to create a casing that will be used for my ruched effect. So now I have 14 point, I went up by 14 and a half inches on the sides and then I ran stitches on both sides of my uh, sewing allowance. I folded it inwards and then ran a stitch all the places like that i ran a stitch like so and i even ran a stitch in the middle so that i'll be able to fix my um rope in in the holes that i made so i'm just going to be puncturing that lower part with my scissors as you can see i'm trying to puncture it please when you're puncturing this don't allow the puncture to go to the other side of the fabric Please just be careful when you are doing this. Just make sure that it's only the upper parts that you are like puncturing. Just take it easy and be careful when you are doing this. Just make the hole as wide as um, the loops that you've already cut out so that it will go in easily and freely. So let me just bring up my ropes as you can see. And then I'll be making use of a safety pin. So I'll be using it like so. Just attach it to the rope like this. And then pass it through. I'll be making use of two ropes, I beg your pardon. So I'll be passing it through like this, just pushing it so that it will come at the other side, to come out at the other side. So that is what I'll do, and then I'll be right back to show you when it has come out on the other side. Please ignore that, my dog. The dog is very stupid, it's just disturbing me this night. Kindly ignore his noises, yeah. So let me quickly do this and come out on the other side and then I'll be back. So I've gone ahead to do it and then I've brought it out on both sides. I've put the two ropes and then they are all coming out. You can see it has come out at this side. That's what I'm showing you right there. This one on one side, the other one on the other side. So what I'm going to be doing now is to, in order to put this rope in place, because if I don't sew on them, it's going to be coming out again so i need to take it to my sewing machine and then run a stitch across it like so just to hold them in place and then when i do that i'll be right back to show you so i've gone ahead to do it because this is exactly what i did on the other side is what i'm doing here so now you can see i'm dragging my ruche and then it's going up so if you want your ruche to go 
more higher than this you can go higher and create your casing and then go higher than that so this is what we have and our gown came out very 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 beautiful yes in fact <laughs> my client was just like dancing because she said this is exactly what she wanted yeah she didn't want the bubble to be too big because she's on the big side so she loved the way it came out it just came out smart on the body and the trouser was also good so if you enjoyed watching this tutorial don't forget to subscribe don't forget to like don't forget to share and don't forget to give this video a thumbs up yeah so if you have any questions like i said please always feel free to contact me just leave it in the comment section and i'll be right there to answer you so like i always say this is genius signatures if you enjoyed watching this tutorial kindly watch out for my next tutorial and like i always say this is me signing out thank you all and god bless you bye see you